Hello everyone, this is James of the Martial Archive. Although my activities are primarily concerned with Asian films, or movies, I'd also watch Asian TV shows from time to time when there's something interesting. And today I'm going to talk a bit about Japanese animation due to the Netflix reimagining of Cowboy Bebop. I've read a lot of stuff about it, I've seen videos of people saying about how terrible it is, I actually watched the show, and I'm actually watching it a second time whilst trying to order my thoughts so that I can talk about it properly. And I feel that I have some points to make that other people haven't said yet about exactly where the TV show went wrong. I think some of the reviews have been a bit unfair. I don't think it's a complete train wreck that other people are saying it is. But I do feel that it has many failings and many ways that it went wrong. So I'm going to try and express why I like the original so much and exactly where I think the new Netflix version went wrong. I'm going to assume that anybody watching this video has already seen both the original animation Cowboy Bebop and the Netflix TV series. If you haven't seen either of those yet there will be a number of spoilers in here, some very large spoilers. So if you don't want to hear the spoilers then you should probably stop watching right now. That said, let's begin. The first time I saw Cowboy Bebop was in the year 2000. I'd started watching Asian films in late 1994 and up until this time I'd spent all of the money that I got from my paper round and my job in a call centre on buying Hong Kong films. I was buying all of the videos coming out from Eastern Heroes made in Hong Kong, MIA and picking up whatever I could find second hand at car boot sales and second hand video shops and all that stuff. And I had seen some Japanese stuff but only really what was on TV. I was getting interested in it but at this point I still knew very little. I'd seen some Japanese films on Channel 4. Uh, they had an Akira Kurosawa weekend where they put on Seven Samurai, Yojimbo, that kind of stuff. And as for Japanese animation, in 1995 there had been a manga week on Channel 4. Manga being the preferred English term for Japanese animation at that time. Nowadays everyone calls it anime. And that week had included Cyber City Oido 808, the first episode of which is still one of my favourite things I've ever seen. A few years later, when I found it subtitled with the original music on it, I loved it even more. Episodes 2 and 3 are okay, but not as good. One is by far the best. They'd also had Legend of the Four Kings, which was so-so. They had on Devil Man, which I really wasn't that keen on. Uh, I also seen Wicked City on TV at some point, and Akira by this time. I think Akira is very overrated. Everyone seems to say it's one of the greatest things ever made. I do appreciate the style of the animation, the cinematic quality to it. The animation was very good, but it was very serious. And it was too serious, and I didn't like the story. I just didn't find it particularly entertaining. But it was very well made. Uh, so at this point I knew very little about Japanese animation. I'd only seen those few things. And I made a friend while I was studying at Filton College. There was a guy in Filton called Dave Pace. If you ever see this, Dave, call me. I haven't spoken to you in a long time. I wonder what you're doing these days. And Dave was more into the Japanese side of things than me. He liked the Hong Kong stuff as well, but he was really more towards the Japanese side. And he was older than me. He'd seen more stuff. He knew more. So I learned some things from him. And one day in the year 2000 I was at his house and he was talking about Cowboy Bebop and I've never heard of it before. And somehow he had a copy of it, don't know where he got it from but he knew people. And he asked me do you want to see it? So of course yeah, give anything a go. So I watched Cowboy Bebop and it was, I wouldn't call it exactly life changing but it opened my eyes to Japanese animation. It was the best animation, not just Japanese, but the best animation in general that I've ever seen. And to this day, 20 years later, it is still the best. I haven't seen anything else since that's as good. 
I've watched many other Japanese animations since, and they've all been compared to Oido808 Episode 1 and Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> and nothing has stood up to either of those since. Uh, director Shinichiro Watanabe directed Cowboy Bebop, also did Samurai Champloo, which is good, I like very much, and Space Dandy, which is also good, I like very much, but neither of them is as good as Bebop. And although there were many other people involved in Cowboy Bebop, I think it's fair to put m most of the credit on the hands of director Watanabe. I th think he's his guiding hands were what made it as good as it is. There was some press in the lead up to Cowboy Bebop about how they'd gone to Watanabe and got his involvement and he is listed in the credits and I've seen an interview with Watanabe where he says basically they came and said this is what we plan to do is it okay? Yes, go and make it good luck and that was about the extent of his involvement and he's just been praying that they're going to do something good with the material uh, I think to get his name in the credits was a very cynical move by Netflix and they were hoping that seeing his name in the credits the longtime fans of the original will see his name and think oh he's involved it must be good then because generally he does very good things whereas the truth is he has really no involvement in it whatsoever he doesn't even own Cowboy Bebop, it's owned by Sunrise who produced it and they're just in it for the money, they don't really care. So before we go on and talk about the rest of the show, we should talk about the woke element that's gone into the show, unfortunately. There's a lot of press in the lead up that there are two non-binary actors going to be in the show. Well, whoop de doo who gives a crap. Uh, for some reason they decided to change Jet into a black actor, whilst in the original he's very white. Uh, I feel that was purely for the purposes of quota filling, and it's a shame that he's in it only for that reason, because the guy who played Jet really is a good actor. I like him very much. And he deserves to be there on his own merits, rather than due to the fact of the colour of his skin. You were really good, Mustafa. I hope you go on to bigger and much better things. Uh, the actress playing Faye, Daniela, she was alright, but they changed her character in such a way that it's very much to the detriment of the show. In the original cartoon, Faye is obnoxious, arrogant, impetuous, irrational, and selfish. But underneath it all, she's actually quite a good person and she has a certain dynamic with the other characters which is part of what made the show good uh, in the Netflix version they changed her and added to her characteristics being a complete asshole and if the roles were reversed if the men were talking to the woman in the way that she talks to them there would be an avalanche of bad press about the misogyny from all kinds of feminists about the show. So we really should stop talking so much about toxic masculinity and start talking about toxic femininity, which is on the rise. There is an opposite to misogyny. There is such a thing as women who hate men, and the word for that is misandry. I've never heard anyone else use that word, ever. And I think it's time we started talking about that. The new normal seems to be that for a woman to show how strong she is and what a great person she is, because she's such a feminist, her mission in life is to say nasty things to and about every man she ever meets. And whilst it used to just be the white men, now she's talking that way to the black man and the Asian as well. So I think it's about time we stop with all of this crap and we all be nice to each other. That's just my opinion. There was talk about a live action film of Cowboy Bebop going into production for a long time and Keanu Reeves was attached to it for a while. Whoa! 
I'm actually glad that that never got made because I don't think Keanu would make a good Spike Spiegel at all. He's just not that character. Uh, Keanu seems to be generally quite quiet and reserved and that's not Spike. So they went with John Cho and John is an actor who I like very much. I first became aware of him from a sitcom he made in 2001 to 2002 called Off Center where he played a character called Chow Presley. You know! Either you know or you don't. And if you've never seen that show you really should watch it. It's crude, rude and disgusting but it's incredibly funny. It's also got the funny one from American Pie and later on they had Eugene Levy from American Pie come in as the PP doc, the urologist, and it was really good comedy. It's very funny. And I follow John Cho ever since. Uh, most of what he's made are shows that I don't particularly like, but he is a good actor. In Harold and Kumar he's very funny, especially the first one, Go to White Castle and also in serious role in Star Trek he was quite good so I do like him but I didn't see him as a Spike Spiegel alike and I was right sadly I did have very high hopes for this because I like him and I wanted him to have a hit on his hands I want him to become more famous and popular I want to see more of what he can do especially in a comedy sense but unfortunately he was rather rather dour he didn't have the right characteristics at all. Spike is supposed to be laconic, flippant, childlike, sense of whimsy about him. In England we say happy-go-lucky. He's brought down by life and there are elements of Cowboy Bebop which are sad. No one's ever particularly happy in it but there are happy moments and Spike is happy when he's working. So uh, I thought John Cho could possibly be okay, but sadly he, he, he just seemed bored the whole time. He didn't crack a smile, well, maybe once or twice, but very rarely. And he just didn't play it the right way. Now that's not his fault, it's down to the scripting and the directing. He's a paid actor, he has to do as he's told. Uh, the guy who's playing Jet, Mustafa, Mustafa Shakir, very good actor. I felt he was wasted in this role. He had nothing interesting to do. But I l quite liked him and I would like to see a lot more of his work. I've never seen anything else with him. But now I will try and find his other stuff and see it. There's quite a lot of it. Uh, the actress playing Faye Valentine, Daniela Pineda. Again, as I mentioned previously, the character is different in a bad way. I don't think that's her fault particularly. I think that's down to the the scripting and the directing and she just did what she was told to do. Uh, we should also talk about her costume a little bit. It's very different to how it was in the cartoon. There's been some stuff on the internet about it. They said that her costume it, the original costume is very impractical especially for doing action scenes and Daniela also made a video where she's talking about well I'm sorry I don't have an impractical impossible body like no one in the world does yeah alright but that doesn't mean you can't wear the costume cosplayers have been wearing it for the last 20 years very happily I think she just didn't want to show her cleavage off in the same way okay that's up to you who cares there's been a lot of negative stuff on the internet about pervy basement dwelling people with their love dolls who are complaining about it. I don't think anyone really gives that much of a crap frankly. But if you're going to try and copy a show you should try and copy what's good about it. And they made such an effort to try and make Spike's costume exactly right. They looked at so many different shades of blue to make sure they chose exactly the right one and all of this stuff. Whereas when it comes to the Faye costume, they just totally changed it and no one cares. So, it's like, make up your mind. Are you trying to be faithful to the original or are you reimagining it and changing everything? And this is part of where the Netflix show falls down. It seems like they couldn't quite make up their minds. There are two ways I thought the new TV show might go. I thought they might either 
try and copy the original cartoon beat for beat but make everything live action or they could go with completely new stories which exist in that same universe and either of those ideas are good in their own way and might have been a good show what they chose to do instead however was to go half and half and unfortunately the half that they took from the original TV show generally those parts are pretty well done and could be better but they're not too bad everything that they scripted by themselves they've added that's new sucks they've tried to extend the plots to put more in there and it's just drawing it out trying to make it longer for no real reason they talked in the press about how they wanted to see more backstory unfortunately the backstory that they've added is not particularly interesting much of it is surrounding Vicious and Julia unfortunately the actor they got to play Vicious has all of the charisma of a wet towel he was not good Vicious has to be really charismatic really striking and really really evil and this guy is just he's complaining about his unhappy marriage to his cheating wife over there who slept with his best friend and all this extra backstory just adds nothing at all the actress playing Julia is a bit better but she's not particularly great and they've changed her character completely turns out she's a conniving bitch and she tries to kill Spike which kind of ruins the dynamic from the original show so we should talk about the plot of the original show a bit more in the original Cowboy Bebop cartoon each of the three lead characters has some incident in their past which is holding them back from having a happy life and they're stuck in the present in a rut and they can't move on from that rut to a happier future until they can deal with this thing in their past and the case of Jet he was a honorable good cop did everything by the book very good person but he was framed for a crime he didn't commit and he was kicked out dishonorably so he needs to clear his name now in the Netflix show he has an ex-wife and a daughter and so that brings part of his past into the present where it's going to stay so he cannot move on completely from his past because that will always be there and there's stuff in the show about him complaining that he can't afford to buy his daughter the doll that she wants for her birthday and he has to go and see her stage performance at school and none of that is particularly interesting uh, as for Faye she had an accident, she was put in suspended animation in a coma medical science brings her back to life later and she can't remember anything from her past and she puts on this persona of being a tough rough woman when really she's just a little girl on the inside who desperately wants to know who her parents are and where they live she just wants to know about her family and her past and whilst in the original cartoon we do sympathize with her and feel that we hope she can find that and then she can let the facade go and be a normal person again whilst in the new Netflix version she's such a complete asshole it's really hard to have any sympathy for her whatsoever I didn't care at all in the case of Spike in his past there is Julia and Julia was kind of pure in a way she got involved with the syndicate by accident she was just a nightclub singer she didn't do anything illegal any crimes as far as we know and she just fell in love with Spike and they wanted to leave the syndicate and be happy together but Vicious couldn't let them go and so Julia's being kept behind and Spike's gone off to do other things and Spike just can't get her out of his head he wants to go and get Julia and live happily ever after now in the Netflix show she turns out to be a conniving bitch and she shoots him she tries to kill him because she wants to be in charge of the syndicate and again it's toxic femininity strong woman who's belittling every man she meets 
She'll try and kill him and she says horrible things to Vicious when it turns around and she's not the beaten and battered wife that she seemed to be. And it's just totally ruined Spike's whole reason for being in the show in the first place. It's just, what are you going to do now? In the original Cowboy Bebop, there's this... The last episode, there's this moment where Faye talks to Spike before he leaves on his suicide mission to take down the Syndicate. They've killed Julia, he has no reason left to live. And he's just going to go and take down the Syndicate out of vengeance. And Faye says to him, why do you have to go? So there's this point through the series where the characters have come together and they're like a dysfunctional family. And whether it's romantic love or brother-sister type of love between Faye and Spike is unclear. That's down to you to decide for yourself. But that whole dynamic has been ruined by her now being a man-hating lesbian. And why would Spike bother to go and take down the Syndicate now that Julia tried to kill him and he has no reason to love her anymore? Uh, it just makes no sense. They've ruined the story completely. And if there is a season two, which I genuinely hope there will not be, because it's going to be even worse than the first probably. Uh, if there is a season two, I don't know where they're going to go with it plot-wise. And whereas... Watanabe had the foresight to make a complete story Netflix is not going to end they're just going to try and keep going on to squeeze more money out of it as long as they can so whereas in the original cartoon in those 10 hours we had not 100% great there are some things I would change about it but it was probably a 9 out of 10 maybe 9.5 out of 10 it is very good Unfortunately, Netflix is more of a 2 out of 10, and they've just been trying to drag things out and drag things out, and everything that they've changed has been a bad change. Everything that they've taken away was good. Everything that they've added in is bad, particularly the dialogue. So the plot is a bit of a mess, but also the dialogue. Face potty mouth is jarring and annoying. Uh, the banter between Spike and Jet is terrible. In the original cartoon there wasn't much in the way of banter. They generally talked about work, food, and money. Those are the kinds of things that most people talk about. Whereas in the new Netflix version they've been trying to go for a rush hour Asian guy and black guy mismatch kind of comedy thing. And it just totally fell flat. There is nothing good about it. And the dialogue is truly awful. The stuff about B-Days, about the shower bath shower, and Faye talking about how you're too tightly wound because you haven't had sex in a long time. It's just terrible. And none of that was in the cartoon. And there's a point in the fourth episode where Jet and Spike are sat in a diner. Jet's talking about B-Days. And Spike says... Please stop. And that's pretty much how I felt about all of the new dialogue in Cowboy Bebop. All of the new dialogue and all the new plot was just bad. The original elements that they made into live action were generally okay. Oh, they changed things a bit. People have talked about how the Netflix show is cheap. Which I think is a bit mean. There's plainly a good production budget. It looks good. There's a lot of nice visuals. But they have kept the spaceship stuff to a minimum because all those special effects cost money. And the action is not particularly well done. It seemed hurried and it's all punch, cut, change angle, slap, cut, change angle. It's all very badly done. There's nothing good about the action. There's no flow to it whatsoever. And I think they really needed less talking, more action, better action. Something that most anime share is that they're generally around 20 minutes per episode. And there's a beginning, middle and end. They set up the plot, the stuff happens, it's resolved. And then that's it, everyone's happy, they've had their 20 minutes of fun. And they move on to the next one. There may be some kind of through line with some plot elements that carry on through the series. But you don't really need to be able to understand any of those to enjoy each individual episode. 
Whereas in the Netflix, they've stretched each episode out to 44 to 50 minutes and added in all of this extra talking, all of the stuff about Vicious and Julia and their unhappy marriage. There's a lot more Vicious, which would be alright if he was a good charismatic actor, but unfortunately the actor playing him is not particularly good. And it's just everything that they've changed is wrong and it's bad. If you look at the original cartoon, each episode starts with they have no money, they're poor, they can't get any good food. They need to find a job so that they can eat. They watch Big Shot, they find a good bounty, they go and they do the job. For some reason, everything goes wrong. Either the bad guy ends up dead, or they get away, or the police screw them so that they don't have to pay the money. Something happens so that at the end, they're still poor. And there's something quite satisfying about this 20 minutes setup, action, resolution, and it's just missing from the Netflix. They've, they paid lip service to the bounty stuff, but they forget about it, and they, it just doesn't have the structure that the original cartoon had. It doesn't have that payoff at the end where you think, oh yeah, they got the bad guy, they're going to get the money. Oh no, they're not, and they're poor again. <laughs> Which is quite funny most of the time. But Netflix just didn't bother with that at all. Uh, there's a couple of times in the Netflix where they have the ding, 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 big shot TV show. And I think we needed more of that because it was some good comedy relief. It was about the only thing that was even remotely funny in the Netflix version. But uh, it just doesn't have that start, middle and end to each episode that it really needs. And there's too much backstory which just isn't interesting at all. We should also talk a little bit about the music in Cowboy Bebop. I was never particularly a fan of jazz music in the past. But then from the first time I saw the first episode of Cowboy Bebop and that theme song Tank kicks in. Oh, I love Tank so much, it's great. I listen to that so many times. And the end theme as well, the real folk blues. Uh, the version of Cowboy Bebop that Dave had, had Romanji subtitles over the song at the end. So I watched it many times and I learned to sing the song. It's the first time I learned to sing a foreign song just because I liked it. So... I can still remember. I should take a tone, I get cool, Niwa, Amarini, Motoki, Wasugi, Teshimata, Madaka, Korono, Korobio, Yasano, Mama, Kazaga, Fui, Teru, Kawai, Tahi, Tomi, De, Darika, Nai, Take, Yore, The Real Folk Blues. I just learned it so well because I loved it so much. And there is other good music in there. I don't like every track, and some of them go on too long and get a bit annoying, like. Call Me, Call Me is really good, I like that. In the Rain is good. But when you listen to the full version of the song, they get repetitive at the end. And the one from the last episode as well, I Wanna Be Free, it goes on and on and on and on at the end. But generally they were quite sparing in their use of the music and they used just enough to make it good. And that sequence in the penultimate episode where Ed leaves and Faye finds where her old familial house was when they play Call Me, Call Me. That whole sequence is one of the best things I've ever seen. And it's hard to express why, but I rarely feel emotion when I watch films and TV. For something to give me an emotional response is quite a rarity. And when that happens, I know I'm watching something good. And that happened a number of times through Cowboy Bebop. Sometimes due to the philosophy where I was like, wow, yeah, that's right. And sometimes due to the music and it's just such a way that it was done. And particularly that Call Me, Call Me sequence. That and the last episode are the two parts that I go back to more than any other through Cowboy Bebop because they're so good. And the Netflix show, I never had a similar emotional response. 
and although they got Yoko Kano back to do some new music, the new music is not particularly good. Some of the old music is used but it's been changed, it doesn't sound the same and it's not used well and they use different music at the end of every episode which you know they did do that in the cartoon a couple of times generally it was the real folk blues but on the last episode it was I wanna be free and then on I think it was Jupiter Jazz they used some different music over the end and it's like the music was used very well in the cartoon and it added so much to it whereas in the Netflix version it just adds very little the music is not as good and it's not used well and it doesn't have much in the way of exciting action to put the music behind so it, it's just not as good one very important factor that is missing from the Netflix version is the stillness, the quiet parts. I've seen someone on the internet write about ennui, which is the feeling of listlessness, of not knowing what to do with yourself. And it's real life. Something that is very good about the original cartoon is that feeling of realness. There's a cinematic quality like Akira had to everything that they do in it and unlike most Japanese animation which is made for kids like Dragon Ball, One Piece, all of that silly magic power stuff, card captors, all of that, uh, a lot of it is plainly made to entertain children whereas Cowboy Bebop is made for everyone but adults will get more out of it than the kids probably. Uh, there is that one moment in the episode with Gren where you see his in the shower and that is kind of not child friendly but apart from that it's a pretty child friendly show and everyone can enjoy which Netflix has ruined with Faye's potty mouth and the sexual content that we won't go into right now a couple of times and that feeling of ennui is very important to the cartoon and like I said Jet and Spike talk about money, food, work even though they're cartoon characters there's something so real about the way it's done that's what real life is like and real life is rarely happy and Spike has a job that he enjoys doing he only smiles when he's working, mostly. Uh, so he enjoys the work because there's something unreal about that. But the real life, the reality of being on the bebop, being bored a lot of the time, that's just the way things are. And I wouldn't call the original cartoon happy at all. We feel happy watching it because it's entertaining, but the characters throughout the show are not really happy a lot of bad things happen to them they never got good food they never got any money they can't enjoy their lives and even the ending most things have a happy ending Cowboy Bebop's ending is actually in a sense happy right, big spoiler if you're still watching but you don't like spoilers then don't listen at the end of the cartoon Spike goes to take on the syndicate and he comes down the stairs <laughs> face plants into the ground and the camera, camera pulls away as his motionless body lies there and we go up to the clouds and there's that song Wanna Be Free and the director Watanabe said in an interview well I never actually said that Spike is dead he might still be alive he might just be having a rest and whilst that is true, I like to think that Spike did die at the end because it's the best ending even though it's sad that he dies in a way it's happy because he's released from this unhappy life which he thinks is all just a dream anyway and he can go and live happily with his beloved love Julia up in the sky somewhere so it is kind of happy 
It's a very rare and difficult thing to do where a sad ending is really kind of happy. Like, oh, they died, but at least they died together, kind of thing. And I don't know how Netflix would plan to end what they've done, but because they've messed the plot up so badly with everything, it's never going to end that way, is it? Although they'll probably do something later on where it's like, oh, well, actually, I shot Spike to save his life, and really, I didn't want to be the head of the syndicate, I just wanted to find a way to bring Vicious down. Although quite why Julia doesn't just shoot Vicious while she has the chance, if she wants to be the head of the syndicate, it makes no sense. It's just a total plot hole that's completely... Why did they do that? It makes no sense. So I'm quite sad about the way the Netflix show ended up. I did have high hopes for it, but unfortunately, I can't recommend it. There were a few times when it was alright. The first 30 minutes of the first episode were alright. They set things up okay. But then it all fell apart due to the massive plot changes that they put in and the different characters. Spike Spiegel particularly. He's supposed to be kind of childlike. He doesn't take anything seriously. He's laconic. He has a sense of whimsy about him. And unfortunately, John Cho, in a Netflix show, had no whimsy whatsoever, and everything was serious. He just looked bored. It wasn't good. So, unfortunately, I can't recommend the Netflix show. If you haven't seen it already and you're in two minds, should I pay for a Netflix subscription just to see that? I wouldn't bother particularly. Uh, Netflix does have the original Cowboy Bebop cartoon, though, if you've never seen that, and that would be worth subscribing to see that. If you've never seen it, you really should. It's still one of the best cartoons ever made. Uh, if you like that, you might also appreciate Shinjiro Watanabe's other works, as I mentioned previously. Samurai Champloo is about a girl in Edo-era Japan who's with two ronin samurai, one of which is kind of a rough animal, the other one of which is a very honorable and respectable man. They're two samurai of very different types and she forces them to help her try and find the samurai who smells of sunflowers. It sounds silly but it's kind of cool. Uh, the other one being Space So Dandy, Space Dandy which is a very crazy outrageous space adventure with a lot of stuff in it, it makes no sense but that's kind of why it's good and fun. Uh, you might like it, I don't know. So those are worth a shot. I would recommend those instead of the Netflix Cowboy Bebop, which is sadly rather a disappointment. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. That's all from me for today. Bye for now, everyone. Have a nice day.